All right, so uh, we are now into an, a chapter about alkenes and the reactions of alkenes. So the first thing that we really want to do is kind of recap what we do know about alkenes. Um, so what's their structure like? Um, where are their electrons? Um, all those types of questions. So we have two different alkenes here. Um, I kind of put both of them up there because we call them slightly different things. This would be a, a terminal alkene. We have a carbon chain and the alkene ends that chain, so it's the terminal position, so it's a terminal alkene. Um, this here would be an internal alkene. The alkene is internal to the carbon chain. We have carbons on either sides that are not part of that alkene. It's an internal alkene. Um, so thinking back to just when we started learning about structure in general, um, what's our hybridization? of our alkenes. Um, so we're talking about the carbons of the alkene. What are they hybridized? So um, go ahead and, and pause the video and um, decide on what the hybridization is for those atoms. Great, you did that, you're back. Um, these carbons have three, uh, three groups around them. Um, the, the, the double bond is technically in one area, so that's one group. And then the two hydrogens are the other two groups. So we need three hybrid orbitals. So they're sp3 hybridized, or sorry, sp2 hybridized, sp2 hybridized, like I drew up here. What is their geometry then? Pause the video, you decided. Um, any alkene is going to have an, an sp2 hybridization and a trigonal planar geometry. Um, so that's talking about the geometry of the atoms of the alkene. So um, right here we have ethene, so that's C double bonded to C with two hydrogens on each of those. Um, and here I've tried to draw in kind of the, the orbitals that, that are showing up in your course packet. So in your course packet you have uh, that same drawing right here that I kind of tried to draw on the board here. And um, those carbons are sp2 hybridized, so they have the trigonal planar arrangement of their atoms. So um, if you look at the carbon here, all of the atoms around that kind of make a triangle shape. Um, so that's where the trigonal planar comes from. Um, and we can show it with the atoms, but we can also turn it sideways. So that's what we went from here to here when we turn it sideways. And when we do that, now the CH bond is coming out at you. This CH bond is going away from you, and the pi bond itself would be in the plane of the board. Um, so that's what's being shown here. And in the model, I have the pi bonds, or the, the pi, the p orbitals drawn in, and the overlap of that p orbital and the overlap of this p orbital is what makes up that pi bond. So again, why is there no free rotation around alkenes? Um, because if we try to rotate, and this is overlapping and this is overlapping, when we get to here, this no longer is overlapping with any of the pi orbitals here. They're out of plane with each other. They're in opposite planes which in chemistry terms we often call, they are orthogonal to one, one another. Um, and, and they have to be in the same plane for that overlap to occur for there to be that pi bond. Um, so take a minute now and say, what orbitals are involved in this CC sigma bond here and also in this CC pi bond here? Um, what orbitals are involved between the two carbons? Okay, pause the video, you did that. To make the sigma bond, it would be a CSP2 orbital bonded to a CSP2 orbital. To make the pi bond, we have a CP orbital bonded to a CP orbital. Um, so those are kind of the orbitals involved in making up that pi bond. Again, the P orbitals overlap to make the pi bond. The hybrid orbital is what is making that sigma bond that's directly between there. Um, so now we're going to move on to talking about the energy of a pi bond. How much energy is at work? Is it easy to break? Is it hard to break? Those questions. 
so what about the reactivity of these pi bonds? So the um, question is, are pi bonds more or less reactive than sigma bonds? Um, so let's look at some bond association energies to kind of try and answer that question. So um, a C double bond C, so that means that it's talking about both the sigma and the pi bond. The bond association energy of that, so remember what that means is, what does that mean? Bond association energy? The energy required to what? Break the bond. So if it takes more energy to break the bond, it's, it's a stronger bond. So a double bond takes 635 kilojoules per mole to break. Um, a CC single bond takes 368 kilojoules per mole. So if we subtract that from that, what would this be equal to? Um, and it is on your course packet, but hopefully you didn't already look at it. Um, what is this equal to? Yeah, if, if this is what a sigma bond is worth, and this is what a sigma and a pi bond is worth, this must be the energy of a pi bond by itself. Um, so again, go ahead and pause the video and say, and circle A or B here. Um, pi bonds are more or less reactive than sigma bonds. All right, you did that. Um, so they are lower energy. So does that mean they are stronger or weaker? They are weaker bonds. So pi bonds are weaker. And that, put, that, that, that allows us to fill in one of the blanks down here. A CC pi bond is weaker than a CC sigma bond. And are pi bonds more or less reactive? Well, if it's a weaker bond, that's going to make it more reactive. More reactive. So we'll even write that in this blank down here too. CC pi bond is weaker and also more reactive. It's easier to break than a CC sigma bond. Um, what about this one? A CC double bond is blank than a CC single bond. Well, here we're not talking about pi versus sigma. We're just talking about the energy of the whole thing, the whole unit. And we can see that a CC double bond is stronger as a whole than a CC sing single bond. Um, but in this, re in this chapter and, and in alkene chemistry in general, we're not usually going from a double bond to nothing. We're not cleaving the sigma, sigma bond. We are going from a double bond to a single bond. Um, and that's possible because this pi bond is weaker, which means that it is more reactive. It wants to react and make something more stable. Um, so uh, that's going to be kind of how this react, how this, how, how reactions of alkenes generally work. Um, we're going to get rid of the alkene because we're forming stronger bonds, and that is the driving force. That's what allows reactions of alkenes to be a downhill thing. Um, so more on that in the future.